This node setup is all you need to create incredibly complex materials and make texturing your characters a whole lot easier. All you need is a mix RGB node and a image texture. Put the color of the image texture into the factor and there you go. But even this only scratches the surface of the concept that is behind this setup. I'm going to turn her into various video game characters throughout this video and you can guess which ones they are. I'm going to put the answer at the end of this video including all the materials that I've used to create the makeup for her. If you plug the mix node into the base color of for example your principal BSDF node and then you create a new image texture make it black and give it whatever aspect ratio you want and then if we change one of these colors to for example red we can see nothing changed because the image texture controls how the mix node mixes these two colors. But now if we go into texture painting and we draw white for example on her lips we can see the lips turn to red. So basically black means zero and white means one or also black is no and white is yes. Now we can still change these colors very very easily. It's very non-destructible. You can always change how you work with this. And this way you can for example create a basic skin texture and then you can plug in multiple of these mix layers basically to add different color changes in different areas of the model. So even with this super simple node setup you can create super complex and super detailed textures for your characters which you can then still change afterwards. We also have the mix shader node. So we can even combine multiple material systems or shaders together, for example, like makeup. The reason why I'm calling these layers is because once you add multiple of these mix nodes, there is a certain hierarchy that it follows. So the one that comes last is the one that is basically on top of the other ones. But of course, if we look at a mix shader, we can see we not only have values from zero to one, we also have all these values in between those. And of course, we can also recreate those in image textures, which is basically the gray value from black to white, everything in between. This way you can, for example, blend between different materials or blend between different colors in a very very, very even way to make the materials work together even better or just change the colors for example very little to have some more variation on the surface and because all these lightness values between zero and one have their own value we can specifically set a color for a certain value with for example the color ram node so this is next to the mix rgb node for example another great way how you could for example define or change colors for different values of the image texture that you're using but one problem you're going to run into is if you want to use more than two colors in the color ramp node the texture painting brushes usually always create a slight gradient on the border which means that you get this little outline of the third color between the other two values which can look kind of weird sometimes But if you want to take it a step further than that, look at any node that exists in Blender. Look at the principal BSDF node. Look at the hue and saturation value node. All the properties of these nodes, you can control by plugging something into these value sockets. And what could you plug into there? Of course, the image texture. So if you want to during texturing, you can not only control the individual colors and how you mix them together, you can also control different shaders, different glossinesses, different roughnesses. You could create one image texture, use that to change the color of your character. You could use the same image texture to change the roughness, the substance scattering, the specularity and maybe even the same to create a bump map and you can fine tune each individual input with different nodes that change the base image texture to whatever you need. One thing you always have to respect is the baseline and range of values that you can plug into a certain node. So for example here these hue saturation and value node, the hue can go from 0 to 1 and the baseline is 0.5 which is what you can cover with a basic black and white texture but other values like the saturation for example can go from zero all the way to two but you can fix that pretty easily by just grabbing a converter math node and then setting that for example to add or multiply and then multiply it by two and if you change that you can see we can even change it dynamically. The values that I usually control with textures for my characters are first of all the base color, then the subsurface scattering, the roughness, sometimes specularity as well, and of course the normal input. I'm going to post a link to a side that I basically follow with my map setups in the description of this video. The basic workflow that I follow is to create the base colors first. Usually for my characters I now use a 
face scan texture as my base color and then I change it with the various hue saturation nodes for example or I use the mix RGB node to add new colors to the mix I guess. <laughs> First I add the mix node into the color, define the second color that I want to add and then of course I create the image texture, define the brush that I want to use whether I want to blend it in more or whether I want to have a very strong brush. I can now for example utilize the pen pressure of my tablet to blend the values better into each other. Sometimes if the blending with a different pen pressure isn't good enough I like to use the blur brush or the smudge tool or I can just go over the same spot multiple times with a slower strength to just slowly and gradually increase the amount of blending or the, the amount of the secondary color that I want to add. One of the great reasons why we have multiple image textures to control the different colors is then we have full control over each individual color rather than having to kind of work with one color to mm, get them all. It is very easy to do something wrong and then fixing that can be a pretty difficult thing to do. And of course, if basic color changes are not enough, then we can go over to switching between different shaders. First, of course, we need to define both shaders. And once both shaders are defined, we can use another image texture to blend them both together. And there are two more things that you should never forget. Always make sure that you save the image texture right after you're done creating the first version. It is only saved in the cache for so long. So once you exit out of Blender or you actually just switch to sculpting, for example, sometimes that completely deletes that image texture. And the second one is to keep in mind how much resolution your texture actually needs to be. Lower resolution textures are blurrier. But for example, for eyeshadow, do you really need a super high resolution texture to add a very blurry color to the surface to optimize the performance while you're working on them and also the render performance i would always recommend considering how how detailed the texture actually needs to be instead of just making every texture a 4k texture and if you want to bake all these layers now into one image texture you can just create a new one of course create your new image and decide the aspect ratio highlight this one and then go to the render settings and down here we have the bake settings in here we need to set it from bake type combined to bake type emit and then we need to go to the last node in the row of the ones that you want to bake together. And if you have Node Wrangler enabled, you can just press Shift Control to fully only see the output of this node. You have to make sure that the object is actually selected. You highlight the texture and then hit Bake. There you go. We have the perfectly combined texture. If you take only one thing away from this video, then please let it be that everything in Blender is basically defined by a gradient from black to white. And you can control every value, everything, almost everything in the shader setup with those values. If you have any questions or suggestions, put them in the comments. Thank you for watching. Maybe I'll see you next time. See ya.